I want to share with you a way for you to have a side hustle, a main hustle, whatever, a way for you to make more income. Hi everyone, I'm Angelina and this is Blueprint DIY where we remake our clothes to be just as unique as us. Happy Juneteenth to everyone, to everyone out there. I promised you guys that I was gonna do a review for the Cameo Silhouette 4, which I am enjoying thoroughly. And I was thinking about what t-shirt to make for this tutorial. And I was thinking like, oh, Juneteenth is coming up. I want a t-shirt for Juneteenth. I've been seeing people making them and they've been making them some amazing t-shirts and I wanted to create one. And I just started thinking about Juneteenth. And if you don't know what Juneteenth is, it is the celebration of when the last of the slaves in Texas, which I do live in Texas, and only about an hour away from Houston where I live is Galveston, and federal troops rode into Galveston on June 19th, 1865, which was two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation, and let everybody know there that they were free, let all the slaves know that they were free. So I started thinking like, hey, whatever situation we're in, whether it's poverty, whether it's whatever freedom that you want and you get free like for me like say for instance I'm thinking about like financial freedom and I don't just get free and forget about other people um, I think it's very important to remember that no matter what situation you've just come out of there are still people in that situation and so I wanted to put on there no fun until we're all free it's no fun there's no fun until we're all free we're all in this together and until we're all free it's no fun to be had. So happy Juneteenth to you guys. This tutorial will make you some cash. We're gonna use the Silhouette Cameo 4 to screen print on t-shirts. Let's do it. All right, for this project, you will need a series of products. Everything that I am showing you in this video, I am linking down below. If you do purchase these from Amazon, it would be great if you could use my link. I would get pennies off of it, but you pay nothing more. Um, it'll just help support this channel. But I'm gonna show you each thing and tell you about it. So you're going to, of course, need the ink for screen printing. And this is screen printing ink. I bought a package of six colors. It comes with green, red, blue, yellow, white, and black. And they all came in this box together. So that helps me to just get a jump on everything. I really do want some other colors. I want gold and different things like that, silver. So you can order those as well. Now I did order a kit that came with tape, the screen, some gloves, um, this thing, this is like the squeegee that you move the paint with as well as like a scraper that helps your vinyl to stick to the plastic and stick to the uh, screen. So that comes in a kit together. You're definitely going to need some tools. Uh oh, my favorite one fell out. This is my favorite tool, I use it more than all the other tools. And it's a pick, almost like the thing that you use for your teeth or that the dentist uses for your teeth. And then it has a flat edge on the side. This is the most helpful thing to me, hands down. And you're gonna see how I use it in a minute. Of course, I got rainbow <laughs> colors, but it comes in a set of three different types of tools. Then I also, of course, you need the vinyl. I have white vinyl and I have black vinyl. That's all I have because I bought this specifically to do screen printing, but I have labeled a ton of things in the house with the white and the black. And I have the adhesive um, vinyl, white permanent adhesive vinyl roll or black. And it is this particular brand, which I will link in the description box below, as well as you will need clear transfer tape for vinyl. And I got the rolls because like I said, you can use the roll um, for the silhouette. So that's what that looks like. It has the lines, which I love because it helps me to stay, keep everything um, going in the right direction. So that's what you'll need. You can find that in the description box below. All right, here it is, the Silhouette Cameo 4. I am having a great experience with this. The reason I picked this one over the Cricut is that this one in particular, the 4, the Cameo 4, you can use just roll. You can directly feed the roll into the machine and cut the roll directly. 
I heard a lot of reviews of people who just weren't happy with the mats that come with these things, how they become unsticky kind of fast, having to replace the mats. And so I, that was just something that I could eliminate <laughs> because there was already gonna be a learning curve for me having to learn how to use this machine. So if I could eliminate that one thing, I felt it just helped me to feel much better. All right, so let's get into how you screen print with the Silhouette Cameo 4. For making t-shirts, the first thing you wanna do is create your own design. Guys, I cannot reiterate this enough. You got, you kinda wanna stay away from copying other people's design. This does come with some ready-made things that you can use, but that's not the reason why I got this one. I was looking at the Silhouette Cameo because I saw in the reviews that you can just, it was easy, and you may be able to do this with Cricut as well. Um, it was easy to take your own designs into the machine, into the program, and just use your own designs in order to cut the vinyl and you can do heat transfer vinyl as well as screen printing. So that's what I do. I currently, instead of Photoshop, I use GIMP. I have been using GIMP for over 10 years. It is a free open source program and I use it on both my Mac my MacBook Pro as well as my PC. So you want to first create your design. All right, so here you can see my design. I just created this on my own. I mean, I do this all the time. If you are interested, there's a ton of tutorials on how to use Photoshop, how to use GIMP. You can even do it on Canva as long as you do it as a PNG file. And the reason you want a PNG file is because the PNG will allow you not to have a background. For this particular one, you do not have to flip it in the program. You can if you want to, but you don't have to necessarily flip it in the program. I'll show you how to flip it in the Silhouette program after we get it out. So I would save this as a PNG, and then we can go ahead and close that and open up the Silhouette Studio. Once you have Silhouette Studio open, you want to go up to File, and you want to open the PNG file that you just created and it pops up there. This is your space of your, it, it resembles the mat, but I put it at 12 by 12 because this is just, it's 12 inches wide. For me, it doesn't matter how long it is because I'm cutting directly off the row. I don't have to set this, the mat size up to here because if it is empty, it just won't cut it. So it doesn't matter. So I'll just move this to a position that is good. It gives a little bit of room up at the top and it also, you know, it has room on each side. The next thing you're gonna do is, and this was a game changer for me, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go over to the side where you see this little kind of butterfly looking thing and this is the trace area and you're going to hit select trace area. And then you're going to select your whole image. Once you've selected your whole image, you're going to press on the trace, trace button down under trace style. And you can pick different types of trace, but you wanna get all of the edges. You don't just wanna get the outer edge, you wanna get all of the edges. So you hit this one. And of course, solid feel. I have not touched any of these other options so if i don't say it then it's it that's how it came and i just leave it how it is once you hit that it has selected it you can go ahead and click your image and move it and you'll see that what's left is your outline image in red and you can go ahead and delete your original image it doesn't delete it from the program or from your computer it just deletes it from this page. All right, so we almost forgot. You don't wanna forget this step if you are screen printing. You definitely want to go ahead and reverse this now. What you're going to do is go up to your object and you're gonna mirror it, flip it horizontally, and that way it's backwards. You'll see why in a second you need to have it backwards because it's going on the bottom of the screen. All right, so once we are finished, we have the image set, we can go ahead and go to the sin area. If you haven't turned on your silhouette, you can go ahead and turn that on now. Once we turn it on, we can go ahead and pull out the tray in the front and open it up. It has these wings on the side that are 
there to hold the roll of vinyl. You can go ahead and put your vinyl in there. You want to put it in so that the smooth side, the vinyl side is up. Then you can move the right side of the vinyl holder over in order to securely hold the roll. Once you have that in place, you can go ahead and pull the end of the roll through the slot and to the rollers. Once you get it straight lined up with the rollers, you can go ahead and press that forward arrow and it'll draw that vinyl in and make it ready for you to go ahead and cut. Once your silhouette is on, it will be detected by your computer and you will see all of the options on the side. So you'll see vinyl mat, that's what I am cutting, Auto cut, that's what we want. Auto blade, that is the blade that is in my Silhouette Cameo 4. It is the blade that came with it. I did not have to buy an extra blade. Just so you know, I am cutting this with the blade that came with the machine. Now, these are very important. I had to look this up extensively for several times because I didn't write it down, but now I've kind of memorized it. These options are telling it the pressure, how hard the um, blade should cut, because what it's trying to do, it's trying to cut just the vinyl and not the plastic underneath. If you press too hard, if you put it on too high a force, then it will cut through and it'll just trash it. I've done that. But if your pressure's not high enough, then it'll barely score it. And when you try to peel the letters off, they won't come clean and you need them. You need them to come clean. You want this process to be as easy as possible. So this is what I found. These are the specifications that I use. For this section right here, I pick two. I started off with one, but that didn't go down deep enough, so I choose two. And then for your force, you wanna keep that at 10. For speed, you wanna go up to six. And for passes, you want to do two passes. And if you see load media down here, everything is blue then you're ready to hit that send button. You can go ahead and send it to the Cameo and it will go ahead and cut it. All right, once it's done, you're going to press and hold this button until it gets to the back. And there is a cutter on the back. Two little knobs you can put down and then a cutter that just cuts it across. All right, so now that we are done, we can go ahead and take it out and back in place and press it close. You wanna keep that close to protect your blades. And it's really compact and it sits right on the side of my desk. Hey, before we go any further, if you are interested in remaking your clothes and different tips and tricks on how to become more sustainable in your fashion, then definitely subscribe to this channel. We are doing this twice a week, every Thursday and every Saturday at 9 a.m. So hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing. All right, back to the tutorial. All right, so I have my design. You cannot see it because it's just very, very faint line. And I mostly use this weeding tool here. And what I want to do is I want to take out the letters and the actual spaces. And yes, it makes sense to take out the biggest portions first. And you just gently stick it in there. You don't want to take out the middle part. So if that part is coming up, then you have a problem. And this has way more applications than just screen printing. I picked my son's favorite logo and added it to the side of his like clear case computer CPU. He loves it because um, now it's customized. Whereas before it was just, you know, he had the, of course, all the kids have to have the RGB lights with everything. So he had the RGB lights, but now he has his favorite anime character on the side of his computer. So you can see that starting to come to life. Just for reference, I ordered this in order to, like I said, to start um, adding 
words and stuff to my garments, my upcycle garments, because I was painting them at first and I wanted them to look more professional, more crisp. And so I ordered this and needed to, it to work within one evening. And the first day, it only took me two hours to figure out how to do this. So I think that if I can do that, like under the wire, you all, you guys can do that. So um, I would highly recommend it. I, I was so scared. I thought it was gonna be a hot mess to learn. I don't look forward to like learning curves of new machines. Um, you would think I would, cause I try out new ones, but you guys can see me in the videos bumbling sometimes. Yeah, but I think anybody can learn this all right all done all right so now i have a piece of the clear transparency tape and i cut it to size but i also need to cut this smaller because it needs to go on here so i'm going to go ahead and cut this smaller all right so now i'm going to need to move the brown paper out of the way because it's going to get kind of sticky and you want a like non-sticky surface but I could also use my cutting board or anything else that would allow it to not stick. But I want to go ahead and lay this on the side that doesn't have the plastic part. And I'm going to peel the tape off and put it on top of there. I'm gonna take this off. You wanna be careful um, cause it will like kind of recoil on you and get staticky and all kind of stuff. And you want to place that. I kind of want to get this lined up. Not everything needs to be lined up, but you know. And you want to be careful because, like, when you press this down, it's gonna pull it up. See, it feels the st <laughs> it feels the static. It's lifting. That's so funny. So I want to get this. Come on. And you lay it, lay it down, and you want to get all the bubbles out especially in those couple of places where's my little a um where are you right here where i had that little a that piece that didn't want to stay down i think i have an o yeah want to make sure you stick that really really well you know what i actually shouldn't have cut this we're screen printing i should have left it square and i'll show you why in a minute because that means I'm gonna need more tape. All right, once you feel like it is all on there, you can lift that up, but I'm not gonna lift it up until I go get my screen. The static is real. All right. Now I'm gonna take the plastic part off of this because it should be stuck to this transfer tape now. So we're gonna carefully, carefully, carefully peel this off, making sure that that O, the middle of that O, the middle of that A stay in place. Yay. All right, then we turn it over and We affix it to here. And then once again, we wanna mostly just on this side because then I can press hard. The other side I can't press hard because I'll deform my um, silk. Once again, the middle of that O, the middle of that A which is a little bit crooked, but that's okay. All right, now we should be able to take this off. Let's see if we, no, nope, it's still sticking, let's see. We, wanna, we don't want any bubbles. Oh, see, no. The middle of the O didn't stay. And I need you to stay, buddy. I need you to stay.
Oh Lord. So I obviously should have rubbed this more. I'm getting excited. Getting excited. It doesn't pay off at all. Because what will happen, see I just ripped it in one place right there. And you'll get bubbles. And if you get bubbles, then there's places for paint to go that there shouldn't be paint. So the bet the more affixed you can get this to the silk, the better. And we're gonna rub this some more. Um, this is why I told you not to cut it. I should have just cut it square because you have to tape off these sides so that paint doesn't get in there. So I just should have left it square. I shouldn't have cut it curved like that. I knew better. Um, that's for a diff different application. So I wanna take this off. I want everything to be nice and flat so it doesn't leave any opportunities for it's not to be as crisp as possible. You don't have to cover up that whole, whole screen. You just gotta make sure you don't get any paint right there. But if you feel like it will be safer, then yeah, just do that. See, I had to get really close with this tape to where I need my paint to go. And that's not exactly what I wanna be doing. So yeah, I should have just left it, but all is not lost. All right, now we're gonna turn it over and make sure we press that down again. Make sure that tape is all set. And we are ready to do our first screen print. Yay. All right, so I went and got my little squeegee to do the paint. I am going to attempt, this is the first time I've ever done like multiple colors at the same time. I'm gonna attempt to do this one with three colors rather than just one. I have only done just white or just black, or you can go back, you can not print part of it and then just go back and do that color um, if you want multiple colors in specific places. But I'm going to attempt to do just like a gradation of colors with this one. We're gonna see how it works. And I have a bowl and some popsicle sticks. I normally use plastic spoons, but I figured we'll try the popsicle sticks today. First thing I'm gonna do is I have a, just a plain black t-shirt. I did get this from the thrift store. I love thrifting plain shirts, which is the catalyst for this video. It's just a more sustainable way to create graphic um, t-shirts and merch. So eventually, hopefully I can, you know, have all my merch be more sustainable. But I appreciate those of you who have purchased t-shirts from my merch shelf down below in the past. And this t-shirt, this Juneteenth t-shirt is down there right now, if you guys are interested. All right, so we're going to do our best to line this up. Okay, so I think that is lined up. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our paints and put the paints on the top wherever you want them. All right, so we are ready. We have it spread out like we need it to be. And that's what I was saying. You have to make sure you have it spread all the way from one end to the other, wherever the letters are, because otherwise you'll have to go back twice. And what you want to avoid is going back twice. I do have some paper towel because I'm gonna have to wipe it in between. So you wanna place it and you're gonna place it at an angle and take it this way. You don't want it straight up. You don't want it too, but you wanna, you know, place it. This is easier with two people, but I only have one and we're going to make sure it's recording. We're gonna go. <laughs> Okay, make sure we don't spill. And I'll just rub off the excess so that I can finish up and do the rest of that green. All right, now let's lift it. 
nice. I do notice I lost the little thing in the middle of my R. So <laughs> we did lose that, but we got a custom t-shirt. Okay, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna hang it up until it dries. And then we're going to lay a cloth over it and iron it. And the iron is gonna set that in. With this, I am going to clean out all of the excess paint. If I don't wanna use it again, you can use it again right after this, especially if I were only gonna use, if I only use one color. But with that extra paint, I could go ahead and do another shirt. Just turn it around and go back the other way. Interessante. <laughs> So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this off. Then I can take all of the vinyl off, the tape off and just spray it in my kitchen. And that vinyl will be ready to use again. All right, so you can see that it's all finished. I really, really like this one. It's so vibrant, uh, especially right there. It just got that hint of yellow so good. And I love the green. Green's my favorite color. So I am going to lay a scrap piece of men's dress shirt you can take any you know another t-shirt any piece of cotton um, or ironable fabric put it on top and you are going to set that in and that way you can wash it and wear it and not have to worry about it you know fading or coming off and there we go that's how you can just make it perfect at home and that is it. Here we are, this amazing shirt as well as the black one. I love both of them. I did put these in my merch shelf if you guys are interested in that because I am not to the point where I can mass produce these or I, I can. Time. I don't have time to mass produce these um, like I want to, but I will get there. But I did want to put this out here for you guys to make money, you know? Like, share the wealth. All about sharing the wealth. So you guys, let me know if you're able to use this to make yourself a side income, a main income, whatever it may be. All right. I have other tutorials for you guys right here. I hope that you guys go check those out. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!